from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are so excited to have our next guest joining us here, Hannah Esselink, joining us from beautiful London. Uh, She's here to talk more about the work she does as an intuitive soul mentor, a psychic reader, and so much more. Now, the name of her company is called Inspiring My Path, which I should point out is also her website, Inspiring My Path. That's actually changed. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. (laughs) Tell me, so what is the website? (laughs) We've done a refresh, and it's now called yourinnerlight.co.uk. Oh, your inner light. Let me write this down. Your inner light. Your inner lights.co.uk. Oh my goodness. Well, congratulations. Okay. There's so much that we have to, to talk about and share because now the work that you're doing, uh, find out more about your background and you do coaching and healing and you're helping people overcome challenges, right? So tell us a little bit yeah. about the overview of uh, the work you're doing. So I'm actually known now as the Inner Light Igniter. We did some new branding and we just decided that was a great name to use. And it's because a lot of the people who come to me, they say that I help them shine their light brighter. So we were doing a bit of branding with me and a couple of people. We decided that was a great name. And we're going forward with the new website, yourinnerlight.co.uk. And the work that I essentially do is I help people to manage their energy levels and I help them... um, to find out what it is, what their life purpose is and where they're going, because a lot of people have been very down and depressed or coming to me for different reasons. So it's a case of looking at their case by case um, readings and seeing what it is that they need. And I do that through my one to one clairvoyant readings. I do soul mentoring sessions as well, which is a lot longer, but it also has a reading included in that. And I also do um, other coaching and speaking events as well. So I talk a lot about energy and helping people to kind of manage their own energy day to day. Well, hold on. I got it. First of all, where do I find you? Do you also have social media pages? I'm sure. Where can we find you? Yeah, you could. I have a Facebook page called Elevate Your Inner Self. Yep. and we're working on getting an Instagram page together. I've got my personal one, Hannah Esselink, but it's not being in that much in use. But the website's the main tool I would recommend for everybody. Beautiful. Well, first and foremost, before we talk about the amazing work you're doing, I need to find out more about you. Would you mind sharing? Um, you know, no, where are you from? Uh, I want to know, of course, a little bit about your background. I know you had some challenges as a child, which I think we all have. Uh, and, and tell me a little bit about from your personal experience, how you got here, were able to connect with the divine. This is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Um, So I've always been intuitively psychic. Like even when I was very young, I was very psychic. I was always seeing things around the house, like uh, I guess you could call them ghosts or energies walking through. I've always been able to pick things up. And And did you share that with your family, your parents or do you have any siblings? And, you know, how did they what did they react? How did they react to that? No, I didn't actually share it with my family. I shared it with some friends. We had a very close family. And so it wasn't it wasn't a family that was maybe ideal in some ways. And Mm -hmm. so it was it was challenging to to talk about that. They wanted you to be just normal and fit into the culture and the structure of day to day life. So that made it harder and very lonely, actually. Um, And so I left my gift alone until I was maybe 16, 17. And then after I went to university, I found a really good teacher who helped me to train, train up and really get to the level that I'm at now, which is helping other people. So you you were always an empath. So like, just share some childhood experience when you knew you had something different or a gift that let alone seeing energy and beings, were you talking to uh, parties that have passed or seeing things that other people didn't see in the future? Yeah, I used to see this being always in our home. So whenever I was a young child, I used to see this sort of figure floating past, but I always I was never afraid of it. I always felt that it was a very protective figure, like maybe Jesus or somebody like that. It was a man. It was definitely a man. And I always felt that it was very... Um, yeah, I was always just intuitive and different from other kids. You know, I always felt other kids pain at school. I was always able to see their challenges before they could. And also um, when our family were visiting, I could always I always knew they were coming. Like I'd have these sort of premonitions days before they were coming from abroad. So I would know that they're coming. But it was a very strict culture and it was it, you weren't allowed to be creative within that space. So it was it was, you know, it was very strict and. And so it was only after I left home at 16 that I was really able to develop 
that side of me, you know. It was just a focus on study, growing up, and the challenges of having other siblings and a uh, very strict household, you know, wow. which really saps your creativity and, and kind of puts all of that stuff on a shelf and then you have to refine it all again afterwards. Amazing. So, yeah, it's I'm sure a lot of empaths have very similar challenges and you're almost seen as weird if you if you're if you have these gifts and you have to realize that there's nothing unusual about them it's just that you have this extra sensory side of you and so it's okay to be allowed to express that you know you are unique i love it so yeah, let's talk about the ways uh that we you know you as a psychic clairvoyant reading soul mentoring you know you want to talk about yeah. this and the importance of meditation so where did you want to start for today i mean there's there's a lot to talk about <laughs> So we can we can talk about energy. I mean, I think I think the readings that I do are all about managing energy, right? It's kind of like you have to manage your own energy. It's a it's a well known fact that everything in the world is interlinked. It's energy. It's all about um, being able to express who you are um, and knowing that there is such a thing as energy, right? Because for yeah. example, um, basically it's like brushing your teeth. If you if you stop brushing your teeth. Every day you get plaque, you end up with teeth problems and you end up having to go to the dentist, right? It's the same with energy management. If you're not in control yeah. or managing your energy on a day-to-day -day basis through meditation, through prayer, through cleansing rituals, through even going for a walk, if you're not managing that, that could lead to a whole load of problems. And basically, um, it can get to the point where you end up suffering from serious uh, emotional or mental health issues, or worse, like you're open to spiritual attacks, that kind of thing. And that that's yeah. really bad. And yeah. uh, so, you know, for energy, I, I would definitely say there's four main types of energy. I mean, for example, you have your physical energy. And all of us are like, we know when our physical energy runs out because we're like, oh, my gosh, I'm just so tired. I don't know what's making me tired. And, yeah. you know, there's a, lot of a big workload or your kids or you've got extra, uh, extra s stress coming from your family or your friends. And when you're having that kind of physical challenge, it, you just go and rest, right? All of us, we go and rest. We take it easy. We take time out. And that's how we recover. But then you also have um, spiritual energy. You have soul energy. Yeah. And on top of that, you also have um, another side of energy, which is emotional energy. Okay. If any of those sides get dropped down, then you're in trouble. And a lot of the time what people don't realize is that it's the other energies that impact your physical energy. So your spiritual energy is very much your connection to, you know, source, your higher self. Uh, your soul energy is your bigger picture, your purpose, your why. And then you have your emotional energy, which is all about your emotions and if you're managing them well or not. Yeah. And it's always one of those mostly that impact your physical energy, right? Yeah. So and and people just think it's they're run down, but they don't realize why they've got an ongoing cold or they're just feeling low and depressed for a long time. And it's suddenly if you go on holiday or if you have a great day out, it all goes because you're in a different you're yeah. in a different atmosphere. You've shifted your energy. So what I help people do through my readings and my soul mentoring is to identify exactly what it is that's causing the knock on effect. And with that we we deal with that one way or another through the reading itself or through um the spiritual tools that i give people to go and, home with and, work with and you're working with people just like us today talking over the phone or on zoom right yeah talking on phone I, I used to be face to face but that got a lot less during covid now it's mostly um online or um it's uh, facetime calls sometimes zoom calls yeah. well then i also read about your retreats too are you still doing those well, we're looking forward to doing some retreats in January, okay. actually. And those are going to cover everything from meditation to um, healing and talking as well. We're going to be speaking about things that can elevate people to where they need to go. So, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot going on with, within that space as well. Beautiful. And let Beautiful me ask, you know, yep, <laughs> because, you know, as a psychic, as a clairvoyant, and what, well, you know, coming to you, how do you know what someone needs, right? Is there certain packages or certain, or you could just like meet me and say, hey, I see this, I see that, I know what you need, right? Are you usually able to figure out the, what someone's coming to you for? Yes, 
<laughs> basically wow. mm -hmm. i am but sometimes it's not so clear and i think it's good that people have a healthy amount of skepticism when they come but if it's too much then i would normally say you're not the right person for me because i have had a couple of people come and they are just they're asking too many questions and i just it makes me feel uncomfortable i think you have to be open to having a reading and open to the interpretation my readings are very direct they're not usually in symbols um i won't just say hey i'm seeing a tree and this means you've got to be more rooted it's more a case of you you can ask questions and if it's a particular issue that you're facing for example recently i had a lady who's divorced and having issues finding a relationship so it's a case of identifying what the blockages are in her case her ex-husband's family were very anti her getting a new relationship so that presented itself as a big block in the reading because obviously yeah. they're sending her lots of negative vibes they don't want her to be successful it's also a cultural thing because she was indian so it's a case of like okay then how do we move you forward with this what are the spiritual tools that we need to do to move you forward or even practical tools right so um but she's a regular and she's had bless her she's had many relationships coming and going she's still trying to find the right person we're working on it um so i'm pretty good at identifying what the issues are straight away i can sometimes use a tarot that's like a six month spread and it will show me immediately where the blocks are or i can just dive right into it and we do a deep dive into it and it will come up with what the issues are that need to be identified i think a lot of people might be cynical of readings and thinking it's a bit too generic or you have to look in a crystal ball but i don't think you do i, th I think things have changed you know it's it's not the same thing as mystic meg kind of looking in her crystal ball it's it's different it's very direct it's very honest and it's it's a revelation to me from God because I work with the higher energies. I work with God. I work with Jesus. I uh, and a lot of churches would hate me saying that, to be honest. Um, I think it's but, amazing, but I get it. I get it. Some people all judge. Yeah, you know, you know what I say. A lot of people, as soon as you say tarot, that somehow they think that opens a lot of negative doors to let in the devil. And the truth is that that isn't true. And I think they should stop fearing that because mm -hmm. it's just a divination tool. I do understand why people might think it's it's not for them it's really you know yeah. negative but we've had ex me and my husband have experienced quite severe demonic stuff which is nothing to do with that that was from other people hating us and just sending us stuff so it's it's really important again it goes back to managing your energy you know waking up day by day jill i'm sure you've had this as well where you just wake up and you just feel blah that day you're like what is it? What What is wrong? What is it that's wrong? Did something come to me at night time? Is there something that I need today to, to shift my energy today? What is it that I need to do? And I don't know how you do that. I mean, do you have a morning routine? Or well, I, ha I like have a, a seven and nine year old, right? And I've always been right, okay. single. So when I say the word single mom, it's the three of us. So it's, you know, we kind of eat, sleep, go to bed together. Uh, my morning routine is trying to get them up, uh, you know, less for myself and all about them getting them out the door. Then mom's got to go to work. And then by the time I'm done working, I have to get them off the bus. And then it's, you know, all about them still. So my routine is there, but it's stressful. Yeah chaotic and I I know one day they yeah. say that's going to change but right now it's a lot I, I miss the old days of waking up and <sighs> having a cup of coffee relaxing listening to the news reading the paper but those days have been long gone for quite some time Hannah but I know I'll get them back right <laughs> that's a shame that's a shame because I have I have ladies who come to me who have young families same same ages as your children or maybe even younger and I have to tell, I have to say to them, look, 10 minutes every day, just for yourself. Can you even just take 10 minutes yes. first thing in the morning? Uh, I could, you know how I could do it is if I have to get up earlier, but I'm so like into sleeping because I spent 25 years getting up at 2 a.m. to work in New York City in television. So I never got Crazy. sleep. I was sleeping three or four hours a night. So the past like five now years. you're catching up. <laughs> People say you can't. I would disagree with doctors out there. Oh, you can. So right now I cherish sleep, but it, you're right. I know what I have to do. And it would be, instead of falling asleep with my kids, which we do, I, I could get back up. I, 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 but I'm guilty. Or I can get up earlier. So I, I'm making excuses. I could do that part. I, I can, Hannah. And, and I'm just about ready to. Oh. Summer's here. They're almost out of school and uh, new routines and new. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's important because the thing is, you never know at which point your energy levels go down for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And it's important to be able to look at that and say, OK, lad, this is 
I need to be um, better in this way or that way. Although I appreciate with kids, it's not. We have our own. We've got two cats. It's different. It's scenario. I have two cats different. too, and we're going to get pick up two more in like a week. I'm crazy. Oh, are I you? Cats. <laughs> I love cats. That's crazy. Cats are cool, but they, yeah. Do they? Do your cats get on? Like, do they get like 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 crazy? Do they like each other? Or yeah, one like one is feisty. Them? They do like each other. But now I'm bringing two new to, into the mix. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm that's up for weird. the challenge. I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> there you go. So, um, yeah, so I think that's that's one of the main things I wanted to say, that it, it is really important to make that time for yourself. A lot of people just say they don't have the time, but if they do, they can make that time, they'll find a lot more value and energy come back to them. You know, and that's one of the main things that I work with, especially with women. A lot of women come to me for that um, or they're going through horrible divorces or they've been abused or, you know, just things like that. But I do also have a couple of yeah. men in my books going through some very interesting scenarios. <laughs> and, and can I just ask, since I'm noticing that this color chart thing in the background, is that an yes. energy shock or thing? What is that behind you? Yeah. For those that are on that's the podcast, it. I'm looking behind her head. She's got this beautiful... You tell me what it is. It's it's a chakra painting that oh, I got is. from okay. on a website called Professional Asian, which is a website um, in the UK, but it's got like thousands of members. Okay. And there was an artist on there, and she did this painting with all the chakras. So we have the the red one, which is the root, and then the sacral, and then the solar plexus, which is the yellow, the heart, which is the green, obviously, and then the blue, which is the throat, the dark purple, which is the crown. Is it the crown? No, third eye, and then the crown at the top. So yeah, it's the it's a chakra diagram. So it's representing all our energy centers again. The some part of the work that I do, um, and I do guide people through a chakra meditation as well to help you get in alignment with who you are and where you're going. That's part of the soul mentoring sessions that I do. Amazing. And now, just to also point out, because you hear the term psychic medium, you hear now. Are you are you Claire? I know there's different Claires, right? Claire, voyant Claire. Explain them to me. Yeah. Some people hear, see, touch, feel. What what type of Claire are you? So I'm clairvoyant. I feel, essentially. I have a knowing of things. So when people come to me, they can ask a question and I, I can pick it up away, straight away. That's what it is. And that's, I, I'm not uh, in, you know, some of the others that hold psychometry, I think it is, where you hold jewelry and things like that. That's not me. But I definitely pick things up very quickly when they talk to me and I, I get the answers very fast. Okay. And, and also, um, it would confuse me when I hear the word psychic, medium. Are you also able to talk to those that have passed on in the human and animal world as well? Are you able to do that? Yeah, sometimes, although it isn't my strength, I haven't actually trained as a medium, but when sometimes in readings, they do come through and I can pick them up and then I'll give past the message on to the person who's there. Um, and that surprises me because I never expect that, but that that does happen mm -hmm. and they can talk to you. They, they do talk to us all the time. And in fact, I just finished a spiritual course very recently and one of the weekly sessions was about ancestors. So we talked a lot about that and we talked about how yeah. to connect with our own ancestors because most of us don't know our ancestors apart from our great grandma, great grandfather. We don't know beyond a lot who is who. And so we, we did a course on that, connecting people with their ancestors and how to talk to them. Um, and it was really funny because I felt my nan come through and she's always there. My nan's always been my wonderful ancestor who's by my side. And um, she was definitely there. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that. And how do you turn it off? I mean, you know, because if it's, you know, and your husband, like, does he like, do you sense what he's feeling or knowing? Is it like a violation of his privacy? Does he feel like, of course, you know how I'm feeling, darling? <laughs> yeah, my husband is like, I think he puts up with it because he's married to me and he's, you know, we've, we've been married you. a year now. We got married last June. So it's, we're fairly newlyweds, oh, beautiful. Um, but beautiful. we've known each other for six years. So it's been like, we've been building on this. So basically he's, he's, um he's an IT cybersecurity guy, but he's also a Reiki master. So he's got the blend of both spiritual and practical. He's very practical headed, but he's also got this wonderful blend of like, um, you know, spirit, she understands spirituality. Yeah. So we always, we always have deep, deep chats. We pray together. We talk about these things. We go to psychic fairs or we go to mind, body, spirit fairs. It's, you know, I'm blessed like that. I'm blessed. I feel like I have a proper soulmate with me. Um, I would say, I would say a twin flame rather than a, a soulmate. But yes, definitely have 
that and i'm blessed for that i think he's smiling he's sitting right over there <laughs> oh hi honey how are you darling uh, i just want to point out i was also on the website reading some client testimonials and for example this person ria uh, from london says my reading was a very meaningful positive experience i found out several things that were true and with which i could relate to i feel more confident in myself now seem to have a more defined purpose in what i should do in life uh also this person saying they connected with you in 2020 at the lowest point in their life this is Sandy, but you taught them the basics of spiritual energy, awaken my spiritual pathway and journey on how energy is all generated by our own inner self. Hannah opened my spiritual journey to knowledge about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual dimensions, including dark energy around us. If it wasn't for Hannah, I wouldn't be walking the path I am today. And there's plenty of more testimonials on that website. Let me just point that out. Your inner light.co.uk. And um, let's continue the conversation. We still have six minutes left. So do you want to talk more about your readings, uh, about, you know, how it works? You want to share some stories of the clients you work with? Yeah, I mean, people can go on the website and check out the testimonies. There's also some video testimonies on there. People have been really kind and, and really been able to share their stories and been willing to share their stories, which I'm very, very grateful for. And, you know, it's almost, Jill, it's almost a weird thing looking back at it thinking, did I help them do that? It's Aww. like, yes, you did. Yes. But it's also... It's also that he who works through me, it is not just me. It is, I have to say, I am a service to these people. And this is what, this is the way I see it. And this is what I want to do um, permanently. This is what, li- what I would like to do to help to coach these people into a better way of thinking. Because a lot of times those of us who are depressed or not in a good way, and I was there myself when I was younger, it's it's often to do with conflict within ourselves that we have to and all those four systems of energy that I talked about, yeah. we have to find a way to balance all of that out so that we are in alignment and go, can go forward with, with what we came here to do on earth. Um, so for the readings, I think the readings are a very deep dive into looking at any issue that they would like to. The soul mentoring sessions are even deeper and they will help to provide clarity, a foresight and hidden blocks that are along your path that we may need to address. So those, I think those testimonies will help people if they're looking for further um, answers, basically. Amazing. And you said you had your own like spiritual awakening. I was reading it was your friends that kind of inspired you like to start doing this to help people, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It was my friends. They thought I was really good. And they um, inspired me to keep going with it because I also have a, you know, I worked in communications. I have a communications public relations background. So it was a case of like, keep doing what you love doing and don't forget that. And I think that's the message for everybody here as well, to never give up on their dreams, which is always something that uh, is easier said than done is what i'm going to say maybe that's a topic for another another <laughs> another episode with absolutely. you absolutely well we still got 4 minutes left so what else do you want to make sure we cover for today yeah so i think that's the most important thing and i would also say that for people to be careful if they're suffering from burnt out syndrome mm-hmm. because that is something that is yeah. very well disguised and we often think that it is, it is something because we're just burning the candles at both ends yeah. we're getting up early in the morning and then we're going to bed late at night and i think that it's important to notice that a burnt out syndrome is not just that it could also be um the fact that you are burnt out because you're not in alignment with one of your four energy systems that actually that's what's burning you out faster than anything else and you're just feeling exhausted all the time and I do know somebody at somebody I'm not going to say where but I do know somebody who's going through exactly those challenges right now having a permanent cold for like the last eight months and not able and I know what's going on but I can't say because it's it's a corporate environment I can't (sighs) really say my mind on that so yeah so burnt out syndromes Be careful if you're suffering from that. Make sure that you are able to come to me or whoever you need to go to to find out that what is exactly causing that because I bet you it is not what you think it is a lot of the time. And so burnt out syndrome is another thing. People just get tired, Jill. They get tired, but they don't know why they're tired. Oh, interesting, especially now. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and since the pandemic, people burnt out and how life has changed, especially those in the medical health profession. But life has changed so much from that. I mean, did you have any insight about that? Like it was going to happen and like this whole... Yes. D- did you? I, Tell me. I did. I actually had a dream oh. before COVID happened. And it, it that was a symbolic dream. It wasn't because my subcon- the subconscious speaks to you in symbols. But I had a dream that the, I was on a plane 
and I was sitting next to someone and the plane was starting to go down really, really fast. And um, it was a long haul flight, like it was from Thailand or somewhere. Okay. And interestingly, we've both been to Thailand since then, me and my husband, but that wasn't what the dream was about. <laughs> and it went down, it hit, hit the water, went into the water and the water started to come yeah. into the cabin and I was choking and I, and I remember just the water coming up and up and I had to get my phone. I was texting madly on my phone to my husband saying, I love you, I love you. And, and outside of the window, outside of the window, there were dolphins swimming around. I could see dolphins swimming. And I knew, I knew something big was going to happen and I knew that I'd be okay, right? Wow. And I, whenever something big like that happens, I always dream about planes crashing. It happened a long time ago, something to do with a relative. And, and then I think the next week COVID started and I thought, okay, that's, that's what it is. I was thinking, what is that about? What's that linked to? And then, boom, it hit. Oh, my goodness. Well, we, so It's all about not being able to breathe and, you know, all the stuff that people yeah. went through during that oh time. Oh, my goodness. Well, we are thankful, grateful you're here. Let's remind everyone how we reach out to you. And do you offer, like, an initial um, consultation with them? Do you offer a discovery call? Yeah, I can offer a 15-minute discovery call or a 10-minute, 10, 10 to 15-minute discovery call with people. They can catch me on my website, which is yourinnerlight.co.uk, and you can email me. It's hannah at yourinnerlight.co.uk, and uh, um, we can take it from there. You can book yourself in for a reading or a one-to-one -one soul mentoring session. I'm also available to talk if you would like me to talk at your event or anything like that online. I'm happy to do that. I am based in London, so if you're further away, it'll have to be online. Um, but yeah, that's how people can reach me. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure having you here and excited to, to speak with you and connect like this. And also don't forget your Facebook page. What is it again? Oh yeah. The Facebook page is called Elevate Your Inner Self. And I often make appearances there or get guests to talk or just come on and uh, do a little bit of readings, live readings. And people tend to hop on and ask a question. So that's the Facebook page. And if you can join that, you're welcome to. All right. Thanks so much. Pleasure having you here. And thank you again. Enjoy thank the you, rest Jill. of your evening. And for wherever you all are listening, uh, whether it's afternoon or morning, have a blessed day and uh, really great to connect with you. Thanks again. Thanks again, Jill. Appreciate it. Bye bye. <laughs> Broadcasting from the Recording. business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.